So now that we discuss voltage gated and ligand gated ion channels, let's see how we can combine these two channels to basically generate an action potential along the membrane of a neuron. And let's begin with the following diagram. So in this diagram, we actually have two neurons. This is known as the presynaptic neuron, and this is known as the postsynaptic neuron. And so the question is, how can we actually generate an action potential on this membrane of the postsynaptic nerve cell? And to begin, let's actually look at this axon terminal of the presynaptic nerve cell. So along the axon hillock of, these, of this presynaptic nerve cell, an action potential is generated. And that action potential propagates all the way to the axon terminal of this cell. And once at the axon terminal, it basically stimulates the release of hundreds of these vesicles that carry acetylcholine molecules. So these vesicles containing acetylcholine are released into this area known as the synaptic cleft. And it travels along that synaptic cleft and these acetylcholine ultimately end up binding onto special ligand-gated eye channels we call acetylcholine receptors, which are these protein membranes shown here. Now, when they bind, they cause the opening of these ligand-gated ion channels. And the thing about these ligand-gated ion channels is they're non-specific. And what that means is they will allow the movement of not only these sodium ions down their electrochemical gradient, but also allow the movement of these potassium down their electrochemical gradient. And so we know that we have many more potassium molecules on the inside than on the outside. And so these potassium molecules, the, I'm sorry, these potassium mines will move spontaneously in this direction. While at the same time, because we have many more sodium on the, ins on the outside than the inside, these sodium ions will move spontaneously into the cell. And as they move along their electrochemical gradient, they will cause an increase in the voltage difference across the cell membrane. So remember, for a neuron, the resting membrane potential is around negative 70 millivolts. And so as a result of this, the voltage will actually begin to increase. Now, if the voltage increases to about negative 40 millivolts, this voltage is known as the threshold voltage. Why? Well, because this is the voltage that is needed to activate the voltage-gated ion channels. And this includes not only the sodium, but also the potassium voltage-gated ion channels. So as the voltage increases from the resting membrane potential of about negative 70 millivolts to about negative 40 millivolts, the voltage-gated sodium channels begin to open and they open very quickly. And this is what initiates the action potential and the value of negative 70 millivolts is known as the threshold value. So as soon as we reach this threshold value, that will initiate that action potential. If that value is not reached, when this movement takes place, the no action potential is actually generated. So we have to reach that value. So let's assume that value is in fact reached. So once we reach this value, we have a very rapid opening of these sodium voltage gated ion channels. So let's take a look at the following diagram. So when the membrane is at a resting memory potential of negative 70 millivolts, this structure is basically in its closed form. And this is the voltage gated sodium ion channel. Now, what happens when we go from this voltage difference to this voltage difference, these paddle domains essentially orient themselves upward. And as they move from this orientation to this orientation, that opens, that widens that pore on this side of the membrane. And as soon as that pore widens, that creates the open state. And these sodium ions can basically move down their electrochemical gradient from a high outside concentration to a low inside concentration. So 
basically this area is known as the depolarization period. And what that means is because of the rapid opening of many of these voltage gated sodium ion channels, we have a rapid influx of these sodium ions into the cell. And so many of these positively charged sodium ions move into the cell and that makes the inside of the cell positive with respect to the outside. And that's exactly why we increase the value to about positive 30 millivolts. Now notice it increases, but we don't actually get to the positive 60 millivolt value, which is what the sodium voltage is at equilibrium. And that's because as we begin to approach this value, some of these actually become inactivated. So remember, about a millisecond after we actually open these channels, they begin to close as a result of the occlusion, as a result of the blocking action of this chain. So based on the ball and chain model, we know that this ball will basically move into that pore and that will block and inactivate the movement of these ions. And so that's exactly what happens in this region at the peak of this graph. Now, at the same exact time, oh, and by the way, if we go back to this section here, so here I said that we have the opening of these voltage-gated sodium channels, but the voltage-gated sodium channels are not the only ones to open. We also have the opening of the potassium voltage-gated on channels, but these potassium voltage-gated on channels are very, very, very slow to open. On the contrary, these sodium voltage gated on channels open up very, very quickly. And so that's exactly why we have this depolarization period, a rapid increase to a positive value of that potential. So the opening of the voltage gated sodium channels leads to rapid rise in the membrane potential. Now, although the voltage gated potassium channels are slow to open, they too begin to open, but they open very slowly. But after about one millisecond of the opening of these uh, sodium voltage gated ion channels, they begin to close as a result of the inactivation of this ball. So this ball domain enters this section and it blocks that pore as shown in this particular diagram. And so now these sodium ion channels, uh, these sodium ions can no longer move into the cell. At the, same as, uh, at the same moment in time, so in this region, we have the quickening of the opening process of these potassium voltage gated on channels. And so they begin to open up. So essentially the same exact thing happens as in this particular case, these paddle domains basically begin to orient themselves as a result of that depolarization of the membrane. And so when this orients upward, that opens and widens the pore at the bottom and that allows the movement of these potassium ions down their electrochemical gradient. And unlike in this case, the electrochemical gradient basically tells us that these potassium ions will move from the inside to the outside of the cell. And this takes place here. So basically what we see happening is the sodium ions can no longer flow into that cell while at the same time these potassium ions begin to flow out of the cell. And what that means is the positive charge inside the cell will begin to decrease. And so that means we'll see a drop in that voltage difference between the membrane. And so because of that, this is known as the repolarization period. So it tries to repolar, uh, repolarize and return that voltage to its resting membrane potential of about negative 70 millivolts. But let's see what happens. Notice that it actually drops below the negative 70 millivolts value. And that's because many of these voltage gated potassium ions actually open and so we have this outflux of these sodium uh, of these potassium ions out of the cell and that causes a hyperpolarization period so hyperpolarization basically means it drops a value below that resting memory potential to a value of about negative 80 millivolts
So the inactivation of the sodium channels and at the same time the opening of those potassium voltage gated ion channels causes the outflux of positive charge out of that cell. And so this rapid drop causes hyperpolarization such that the membrane potential drops below the resting potential of negative 70 millivolts. Now, after about two milliseconds from where everything essentially begun, what begins to happen is, as a result of this drop in voltage, these voltage-gated potassium ions will begin to close, and some of them will also become in uh, inactivated in the same method that we discussed here. So the ball will basically enter that pore section that will close that channel and will prevent the movement of these potassium ions. Uh, potassium ions. And so what happens is, as both of these are closed and inactivated, we'll see that eventually that voltage difference will approach that resting membrane potential. In fact, the sodium potassium ATPase pump actually is also used to help return this voltage to its original resting membrane potential. And that happens around this section. So once again, let's summarize how these two types of ion channels, the voltage gated ion channels and the ligand gated ion channels actually work together. And let's take a look at this diagram. So in this section, we basically have the action of that acetylcholine receptor. So at, as it is opened up as a result of the binding of that ligand, the acetylcholine, it causes an increase in that voltage value. And eventually, if that voltage reaches the threshold voltage, it causes the rapid opening of the voltage-gated sodium ion channels. At the same time, it causes a slow opening of those potassium voltage-gated ion channels. And so because we have the rapid opening of these voltage-gated sodium ion channels, these sodium ions move into the cell and that makes the inside positive with respect to the outside. And that's why it shoots up. And this is known as the depolarization period because we change the charge values on that cell membrane. So before, during the resting memory potential, the inside was negative, the outside was positive, and now it essentially reverses. So the inside becomes positive, the outside becomes negative, and that's where we're in this period here. So it reaches a peak of about positive 30 millivolts, and it never actually reaches this value here, and that's because now these become inactivated. So as a result of this ball, it basically goes into that pore and it inactivates that protein and it basically prevents the movement of those ions across the cell membrane and that happens here. At the same exact time, those voltage-gated potassium ions that were slow to open now open up much, much quicker. And so because we have the closure of these and the opening of the potassium voltage-gated ion channels, now the positive charge begins to move out of the cell. And this is known as repolarization because as the charge moves out, the inside of the membrane will once again become negatively charged. And so, because we have the inactivation of these potassium, uh, of these sodium voltage gate channels, and the activation of these potassium voltage gate on channels, it actually goes below that negative 70 millivolt value. And this is known as the hyperpolarization period. And eventually, there will be a closure and in some cases an inactivation of these potassium voltage gated ion channels and so that will basically help return that voltage difference back to normal. Of course with the help of that sodium potassium ATPase pump eventually that resting membrane potential is returned back to normal to a value of negative 70 millivolts and in that moment in time these are basically returned back to this stage and this stage stage and that cycle can basically repeat itself once again. So this is how these two ion channels work together to basically generate that action potential.